All right, this video is on reactivity, and reactivity is different between the metals and the nonmetals. So we're going to start with the metals. Metals react by losing electrons. So metals, remember, are everything to the left of this staircase, and they typically are going to lose electrons. So lithium has one electron in its outer shell. It's going to try to lose that electron. Magnesium has two in its outer shell. It's in the second column. It's going to lose those. So let's compare two electrons two atoms rather. So here is lithium and here is beryllium. So they're each going to try to lose an electron and when they lose them they'll lose an outer electron. So which one's going to do this more easily, better, which make it more reactive? So again lithium has fewer protons so they're not holding on to the electrons quite as strongly. So this thing is going to escape more easily than this one which is held in by four protons. So that makes lithium more reactive than beryllium. And that's going to be a continued trend as you move to the left on the table. For metals, you're going to get more reactive. And if you remember, the most reactive metals on the table are these alkali metals. Um, they react with the air very easily. They catch fire in water. So that shows that trend. As you move to the left, for metals, they get very reactive. Now let's compare two uh, metals in the same column. So let's compare lithium to cesium. So again, here are two Bohr models, and I didn't draw every electron um, in cesium, it's just too many, but we're going to lose the outer electron. So the question, which one's going to escape more easily? So yes, there are only three protons here, but this electron is very close to the nucleus. This one is way, way, way away from the nucleus in this outer ring. So it's going to slip away more easily, and so this is going to be more reactive. So this is going to be more reactive than lithium. And so as you go down the table for the metals, they get more reactive. So if we combine that, left is more reactive, down is more reactive. The metals get more reactive as you go down into the left. Another way of thinking about this is this is the boundary between metals and nonmetals. As you get farther from that boundary, the elements get more reactive in this case. So now let's do some comparisons. So we're going to compare uh, potassium to rubidium. So rubidium is further down into the left. It's more reactive. And again, the reason would be more shells, so the electrons can escape more easily. Between calcium and iron, so we have calcium here, iron here, calcium's further to the left. And the reason is it has fewer protons holding those electrons in, so the electrons can escape more easily. Finally, rubidium versus calcium, even more so, down into the left is going to be rubidium. Again, the primary reason is it has more shells. And again, there's this ZF thing we can talk about in another video that also helps explain it. And again, it can be tricky. If I say what's more reactive, sodium or um, tantalum, you know, it doesn't follow this pattern. But you know, this, this column right here is super reactive. So pretty much anything in this column is probably going to be more reactive than just about anything over here. So the trend works best when you're within a row or within a column. But you can sometimes make assumptions about other ones. Now let's talk about the nonmetals. So the nonmetals don't react the same way metals do. They react by gaining electrons. So for example, F has seven outer electrons. It's in the seventh column. It's going to look to gain an electron. So the question is, which ones are going to gain better? So again, let's compare two atoms, oxygen and fluorine. So we say, which one's going to gain an electron better? So it, this is just like the electronegativity trend. This electron's more attracted to the more protons and so it's going to want to go to fluorine more than it's going to want to go to oxygen. So the trend is as you move to the right, you're going to get more reactive for the nonmetals, again, with the exception of these noble gases, which do not attract electrons. So as you go to the right, you have more protons. These electrons are attracted to those more protons, and they're going to go to those atoms. And again, we can also make a comparison between ones in the same row. So like before, we'll compare fluorine to iodine. So if you're an electron and have to choose between these, you might initially think more protons would be more attractive, but again, it comes down to you want to be close to the nucleus, close to the stage here. So the electron's going to be more attracted to the one with fewer shells than it is to the one with more shells. So again, as you go up the table, you're going to get more reactive. So combine these two trends. As you go up and to the right for the nonmetals, you get more reactive. So remember, that's the opposite for the metals. The metals got more reactive as you went down and to the left. But the trend is pretty much the same. This is the staircase between metals and nonmetals. The farther you get from the staircase, for metals, it's more reactive, and for nonmetals, it's more reactive. So this is like the middle ground. The farther you get from that middle ground, the more reactive they get. 
And now just to do some comparisons between the nonmetals. So here we have um, fluorine and chlorine. So fluorine is farther from the staircase to the upper right. Fluorine is more reactive. But the real reason is that it has fewer shells. So it's more attractive to those electrons that want to come on board. Between N and O, so here's N, here's O. O is going to be, um, has more protons, so it's going to be better at attracting the electrons. And lastly, between phosphorus and neon, so we have phosphorus is here, neon's here, but neon's a noble gas, so it's sort of disqualified, so phosphorus wins as a result. And that is how you determine which element is more reactive uh, on the periodic table. Generally speaking, of course, there are exceptions. So until next time, I am Derek Genova. Have a delightful day.